Hello everyone, as you can see it's cloudy again. So what do as astronomers do when it's cloudy? Well we tend to sort of hang around on forums and we plan bits of equipment we want to buy, different configurations, we plan objects we want to image with our equipment, objects we want to see and what do we do? We use software and apps to sort of aid us in this. So as it's a very cloudy night i'm not going to get any astronomy done tonight or in the near future i thought it'd be good to look at some software i've been using a lot in my job called astronomy tools the way you get to that is you can either google astronomy tools or you can go to the first light optics website and just hover over info and go to astronomy tools that way now for full disclosure, I do work for First Light Optics, but I'm doing this video for my personal YouTube channel. So it's not in association or sponsored by First Light Optics. It's just that I use this quite a lot in my job and I think it's really useful for people to know about. And it's, it's free. There's nothing for me to be gained by showing you this really, other than it's a free tool for everyone to use and it's got lots of useful things on it. So. I really want people to know about it because I think it will be useful. So first of all, I'll just, I'm not going to go through absolutely, it's got quite a lot on this, so I'm not going to go through absolutely everything. Um, you'll fairly quickly get the idea that it's self-explanatory a lot of this, but I just want to highlight a number of the useful things and then obviously you can look at it at your leisure and then go deeper. So just going across the top here, if we go to this first tab, this is a really useful calculator for field of view, for, for visual imaging and binoculars. So if I go to, for example, imaging, I can put my telescope in there. No, sorry. <laughs> I can put my uh, messier object in there. So we can put like, I don't know, the, we'll go good old crab nebula. Not done that one for a while. And then telescope in that one, we'll put my telescope I've got, which is a 200p. And it gives you your focal length for that, which is indeed a thousand millimeters. And we can put our camera in there that we want to use with that telescope. So let's have a look here. Let's go for the good old classic Canon 1100D, a good solid beginner camera for people starting out imaging, for example. So, what this will do is it tells us our pixel size and it tells we can change binning but with a DSLR we don't worry about that. It tells us our resolution given by that telescope camera combination um, based on the focal length and the pixels size and that gives us a resolution of one arc seconds per pixel. So we know that using that camera combination with that telescope that we're getting one arc second per pixel resolution and this is to do with something called over and under sampling. I won't go too deeply into it, but you want to kind of aim for, if you live at sea level, you kind of want to aim for between like one, one and two, one and three arc seconds per pixel. Anything over that, anything below that, say that was 0.5, that's very fine resolution, but the seeing conditions wouldn't support that resolution. And very fine pixels aren't sensitive as big pixels, so you would be oversampling because you're not optimizing your um, resolution of your camera telescope combination to the scene conditions. And conversely, undersampling is if you had that and that was like four or five arc seconds per pixel, then you're your, your image is going to look a bit blocky because you've not got the resolution. You'll have the sensitivity, but you won't you won't be able to image at the resolution the seeing will allow. So it's the opposite case. So anyway, let's have a look at an example of what we get when we plug all these things in. So we can now we've got the telescope, the camera, and we've looked at the resolution briefly. If we hit add view, it's going to show us. Oh, that's not. There we go. <laughs> I thought it was it's playing up there. I think, think it's my computer rather than the, the actual site. But here we can see with the Skywatcher Explorer 200p and the Canon 100D, this is the field of view given by that yellow box. And that's how big the Crab Nebula will look in on that camera sensor or on your picture. So it gives you an idea about how to frame potential targets with your setup 
or if you're looking to set up a camera and telescope specifically for certain objects like for example if you want to set one up for going after uh, small galaxies and you want to make sure you've got your resolution right you can check that here and also see how it's going to look in here so let's do that for actually for a quick example let's put like I don't know like a C8 edge in and we'll use a dedicated astronomy camera let's try something like uh, ZWON go for something like the 533 ah, we might want to bin so immediately you can see that our resolution is 0.38 which is massively oversampled there's no way we could be able to see that resolution with our seeing conditions at sea level maybe at the top of Mauna Kea or somewhere above above the clouds where the atmosphere is a lot thinner and a lot less turbulent we'll be able to get that kind of resolution but down here by the you know by the sea at sea level no chance so yeah so we're looking to set up a a rig for going after small galaxies so we know if we had that telescope with that camera we'd probably want to bin it to 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 bring that resolution closer to one arc second per pixel so we would be binning if we use that combination so we can add that view now and let's actually put a galaxy in as well so let's go for I don't know, m51 is a good one there we go so we can see there in the green box we'll be cropping quite tightly round the whirlpool galaxy so we could see that would frame it nicely and with 2x2 two two binning will give us 0.8 arc seconds per pixel which is pushing just on the edge of sort of oversampling but I reckon that would be doable so you could see you can actually plan what kind of setup you want to have or you can plan targets you want to go after with your existing setup using this tool it's really handy and you've got this add new equipment thing here so if you can't find your telescope or camera you can fill this in and add equipment and um, you can do that with eyepieces binoculars telescopes cameras so that's a very useful tool on this second tab here there is a lot of things if I go through everything you will probably glaze over so I'm just gonna it's all on the same theme I know you know how to click on things and you're not stupid so what I'm gonna do is just click on a few that I really like so I mean these are obvious focal length ratio magnification field of view um, that you know they're obviously calculators for those things if I click on telescope capabilities that's a bit more sort of like enigmatic like you don't quite know what that is so I, I want to talk about this one so this is quite cool now it's got doors limit and Rayleigh limit they're basically two ways of working out your maximum resolution and it's just basically two approaches out that you can put your aperture in it will give you an arc second resolution for that aperture of a telescope but it's two different approaches like the the doors limits like um, that's reach when the airy disk of a star is kind of sitting inside the diffraction ring of another star so it's like splitting double stars to see the resolution of your telescope and the Rayleigh limits just a slightly different approach it's when you can separate two equally bright stars and you can see they're separated basically so that's what that is and then we've got the limiting mag magnitude calculator which is really good I think because like if you look at a star chart you can see different like magnitude of stars but what can your telescope actually give you so for my 200p with 200 millimeters of aperture it's going to tell me I've got 14.2 as limiting magnitude for seeing the stars so I think that's quite useful to have as well and this one's a lot of fun as well the light grasp ratio calculator because what you can do here is as this blue bar says if you read that camera against compare against the human eye by putting seven in the smaller telescope aperture box so here so that seven is going to represent your pupil dilation so if you're treating your own mark one eyeballs as a telescope uh, we've got an aperture of seven millimeters and then we could compare that light grasp to say my telescope again my 200p with 200 mil of aperture and it's going to tell us that my telescope is 816 times better grasping light than my human eye so 
816 times more light than the naked eye itself. So I think that's really cool. And that's one I wanted to show you. Binocular calculator, I'm, I've not really touched on that, but you can look at that if you're interested. CCD calculator, it's actually for CMOS as well. It's not just for, oh God, what we got going on here? Um, I think it's, this is just basically my internet, not, <laughs> not anything else. So let's go back into CCD calculator. It worked that time. And we can calculate the resolution I actually need to point that out actually because that's a bit of a typo there. It says resolution. So I will highlight that with the boss. Hopefully get him to change that. So calculate the resolution in arc seconds per pixel of a CCD or CMOS camera with a particular telescope. So you can plug in your pixel size, focal length, and it'll give you a resolution, etc. etc. So there's lots of useful things there. And CCD suitability is another one. It's got lots of information there to go through if you want to read. This is quite cool, I think, because it's quite visual. So it's similar to looking on the first tab of the field of view where you could look at your arc seconds per pixels, but this is more of a bespoke tool for that. So we can put, I know it's boring, I'll put my aperture in again, my 200p telescope with 1000 millimeters focal length, and we'll put a camera. I've actually got the ZWO462, so let's see if I've got that there. So we can see if I use that combination natively in bin 1, 1, that the bar's gone quite far this way, and it gives you like a little report. I think the idea is that if it's in the green, you're okay, and if it's in the blue, purple, you're oversampling, and if it's in the orange and red, you're undersampling, so it tells you here. The idea of pixel size for okay seeing is 2 to 4, full width half maximum and it says seeing is 0.67 to 2 so this is kind of more of what I base mine on I'll go between 1 and 2 arc seconds per pixel this combination leads to slight oversang yeah it's talking about this here this combination leads to slight oversampling will require a good amount and careful guiding so yeah so it's giving you advice about this combination of telescope and camera that you're going to need really good guiding because you're oversampling, so you've got really fine resolution, and therefore any tracking errors are going to show up really easily. Um, so if I put a different combination, if I put a different one in like this ASI 2600mm, that's brought that up to um, the green now. So we're, our resolution is 0.8. So it's getting a bit better. Let's try and find a camera of really chunky pixels. I don't know, is it like an old Attic Titan or something in there? Let's have a look. Attic. Here we go. Attic 11,000 with its massive pixels. <laughs> 9 UM pixels. And that's brought that down resolution down to nearly 2 arc seconds per pixel, like it recommends here. The ideal pixel size for OK seeing. So you get the idea about that one. That can be a lot of fun and it's quite visual and um, filter size I don't know the relevance of that actually because filters just come in the sizes they do 1.25 2 inch clipping filters those square ones are full frame cameras guide scope suitability awesome this is really important for anyone thinking about setting up a guide scope setup because what you want ideally is your guide scope to be about the third or a quarter of the focal length of your main telescope all things being equal with your pixel size between your guide camera and your main camera so when you're locked on a star with your guide camera and it drifts off it's actually got the resolution to detect that drift and feed that back to the mount to make the adjustment so what we can do here is we can plug in a telescope and camera for your main telescope and then a guide scope and camera so let's just do this now quickly 200p and my camera let's just use like I don't know Canon 600d for example and so what I, let's pick a I'm gonna do a bespoke um, focal length because I think probably 200 a lot of people would probably try and use a 50 mil finder guider on that which is going to give a ratio about 1 and 5, which is pushing it a bit, but let's go with that. And 
Therefore, uh, we need a guide camera as well. So let's go with the good old ZWO120, which is the popular choice. Where's that? There you go. Aha! There we go. So the the pixel size of the guide cam has actually brought this back to being quite reasonable actually. So we've got a guide ratio of 1 and 4, which I think we could just about get away with. So we could see this combination could work, having a, you could have a Skywatch 200p with a Canon 600D as your main rig, and then your guide scope could be like a 50mm um, a f4 200mm focal length guide scope with a ZWO SI120, and because your pixels are a bit finer with your guide scope, if it was the same, it'd be about one in five, which is pushing things a bit. But because you've got finer resolution with your guide scope camera, it's brought it down to a ratio of about one in four, which I think is passable. So this is really useful for sort of working out what kind of rig you want with guiding and whether that's going to be suitable or not. Again, you can add new equipment via that tab if you want to sort of add new eyepieces, camera, binoculars, etc. I think that's a standard for all these tabs we can just add stuff um, we've got a basic unit calculator as well so that's metric imperial got a star chart nothing competing with stellarium or anything like that but what we can do we can put a location in there like I don't know, Brazil and it will give you the lat longitude and it will show you how the constellations look you can move this around um, this is the weather app and I've covered that on a previous video if you want to see that video I'll link it in the corner I'll go into quite a lot of depth about this and and you can look at coordinates as well so if I put like London or something if it will accept that yep I'll click on that one give us a map and it'll also give us lat longitude as well. So that's useful. If you need like your coordinates for your handset of your go-to telescope or something like that, that's quite handy. And then on this tab over here, free, we can ask free, we can go through frequently asked questions. You can contact the astronomy tools, do it that way. And this one's got some links to First Light Optics, Clear Outside and the Stargazers Lounge Forum. And if you want to get in touch about any bugs or anything, we have that one. In general inquiries, general inquiries here, feedback and requests. So I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell without going too deep and making everyone glaze over. But this is free to use. I think it's really useful. I've been using it a lot. Um, and I've been also sort of like linking this to customers as well because um, I find it useful for explaining stuff so that's kind of prompted me really to sort of like think I, I want to sort of like you know shout about it a bit because it's really quite a lot of useful free tools in one place so hopefully that was okay and you enjoyed that and it was useful if you found it useful um, give me a thumbs up but if, you, if you don't don't worry about it it's okay I'm not sure how important that is to be honest but it's just what everyone says on YouTube isn't it Anyway, so I'll see you in the next video <laughs> and uh, take it easy. Bye.